We have a great batch of kids DVD releases this month, and uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is one that I like much better than my kids, and that's mostly because I won't let my kids watch it just yet, and that is Marvel's The Superhero Squad Show, Quest for the Infinity Sword, Volume 2. Yes, that is a mouthful, but The Superhero Squad Show is a lot of fun. It's a really kid childrenized version of um, Marvel superheroes. And I don't mean they make them children. I mean it's really designed for young kids to watch. My kids are just a touch too young still to be getting into the superhero stuff. But I really like the show. As a long life, a lifelong comics fan, I always enjoy seeing my favorite characters brought to life. And this is sort of a fun show because, you know, you don't have to worry so much about things like characterization, if the voices match the characters, the style of the animation, because it's really geared for a young audience. So it's very, I don't say dumbed down, it's not dumbed down, it's just very uh, simplified. And that makes it a lot of fun to watch. There's not mythology to worry about, there's not character backgrounds to worry about. You really just can have a lot of fun watching a great show about superheroes that happens to be applicable for all ages. Um, so I really like this show. Uh, it's a It's a fun fun show. The only complaint that I have is that it's one of these DVDs that has six episodes on it, and I always prefer shows like this to come out in complete season sets. But since we don't get that, at least there are six episodes and a few uh, extra features, including an interview with voice actor Tom Kenny, also best known as SpongeBob SquarePants, and some character profiles and an art gallery. So a little bit of extra bang for your buck there for the kiddos. Next up we have Nihao Kailan, Princess Kailan. And this is a pretty typical Nickelodeon release, but that's okay. My kids love Kylan. I always enjoy getting new DVDs for them to watch. It includes three episodes as opposed to the usual four, but that's because the Princess Kylan episode itself is a double-length episode. So it's really like getting four episodes. Just one of them happens to be combined into two. On top of that, you get the Walking on Sunshine music video, and you might be wondering what that has to do with anything. They've been running it on Nick Jr. It's the show, the song's 25th anniversary, and they've been um, running a music video with Nick Jr. animation in it. So that's really the only extra feature. So nothing extra in terms of what you get for Nihao Kailan, but it's a fun cartoon. It's, it's a fun way to kind of ex lightly explore Chinese culture. Um, and what can I say? My kids love it. They're three and a half. They think the show is the bee's knees. So I'm sure your kids will like it too. Next up, we have two releases from Sesame Street. We have Sesame Street, C is for Cookie Monster, and Sesame Street, Elmo and Friends, The Letter Quest, and Other Magical Tales. Now, The Letter Quest is, um, the lettering on The Letter Quest packaging is uh, very much reminiscent of Harry Potter. I think that's obviously what they're trying to go for here, although it's not really a Harry Potter um, uh, spoof, so to speak. It's three stories that all have sort of a um, fantasy or quest kind of bent to them, and that is the letter Y quest, the shoe fairy, and the cookie touch. Uh, what's neat is that the shoe fairy is actually played by Neil Patrick Harris, so that's a lot of fun. Um, and so the 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 cookie touch fairy is played by um, Christina O oh from Grey's Anatomy. So a little bit always nice for the parents to see some kind of celebrities show up. And this is a pretty typical um, Sesame Street release. There's it's about 48 minutes. That's typical. I wish it was a little longer, and there are no extra features. So it's a little short for my taste for the money, but of course Sesame Street is a trusted brand, so it's hard to complain. Um, the CS4 Cookie Monster disc is almost the exact same thing, except this one at least runs over an hour. That's nice. That's rare for the Sesame Street discs. Still no extra features, but at least you get an hour and seven minutes of content. And you get three um, stories here, all featuring Cookie Monster. You get C is for Cookie Mashup the Cookie Hood story, a little playoff on Robin Hood, and a cookie is a sometimes food. So three stories, all featuring Cookie Monster. If your kids love Cookie Monster, great DVD. If he's not their favorite character, probably not going to like this one. He's in pretty much every scene. Next up, we have Disney's Phineas and Ferb, A Very Perry Christmas. Now, Phineas and Ferb, you know, I, my kids don't watch it. It's a little over their heads. They're a little young for it. I know it's extremely popular. I haven't figured out why. I've watched this cartoon a number of times um, on DVD, and I just find it kind of annoying. I realize I'm not the target audience, so I, don't take my word for that. If your kids like it, this is a pretty good DVD. There's actually um, some, some nice bonus features. Of course, it's a Christmas DVD, so if your kids, you know want to watch Christmas Phineas and Ferb episodes, this is certainly a good way to do that. Um, that being said, you also get extra features including Phineas and Ferb's Virtual Fireplace, Dr. D's Christmas Jukeboxinator, which is your favorite Phineas and Ferb songs, Christmas Karaoke, which is karaoke, uh, Letters to Santa, which is your character's Letters to Santa revealed, 
Keep On Building, which is a nice behind-the-scenes little mini featurette about creating a song, a bonus episode called Doof Side of the Moon, and a, quote, surprise gift from Santa. Uh, this disc runs 80 minutes, so it's a pretty good amount of uh, material there for the for the money that you're spending. So, again, for Christmas, it's a great gift for kids who like Phineas and Ferb, even if I don't happen to be one of them. Next up, we have Thomas and Friends' Merry Winter Wish. This is, of course, a um, Christmas episode of Thomas and Friends, Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, all I guess technically it's a winter episode, but since Santa Claus is on the back cover, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's a Christmas episode. Um, as always, it's nothing much in the way of extra features. You get a set-top game called Sir Topham Hatt's Frosty Friend. Um, but it runs 50 minutes, and it's the cool, new, uh, computer-generated Thomas that I really like compared to the old-fashioned Thomases with the real tank, the real, you know, model trains. I found that extremely dull to watch. And so um, this is a great one. My kids really enjoyed it. It's it's nice to have Thomas uh, Christmas episodes, something I haven't had before, even though I have about 400 Thomas DVDs in my collection. So uh, it's a lot of fun if your kids like Thomas. Continuing the Christmas theme, we have Angelina Ballerina, The Nutcracker Suite. Sweet is spelled S-W-E-E-T. Um, and this is, of course, the uh, ballet dancing mouse, Angelina Ballerina. And it's an hour-long DVD featuring the computer-generated cartoon of Angelina Ballerina. Um, my daughter likes this show. She thinks it's cute. She likes dancing mice. My son, eh, not so much with the interest in it. That's to be expected, I think. There are just some cartoons that are going to lean more towards one gender or the other, and Angelina Ballerina leans a little bit towards the girls. Not there's anything wrong with it. My son has watched some of it and enjoyed some of it, but my daughter definitely tends to gravitate to it much more than he does. Um, the only bonus features you get are a Prima Ballerina puzzle and a front row seats karaoke video. Um, but again, at a little over an hour, that's not too bad for a kid's release. Finally, we have The Wubulous World of Dr. Seuss. There is nothing to fear in here. And this is, of course, actually a Halloween episode. We're jumping back from Christmas to Halloween. Um, it, this is the sort of live-action puppet show featuring characters from the Dr. Seuss world, uh, mostly led by the Cat in the Hat. Um, and it, it's interesting. It's a little bit weird for my tastes. I'm not quite sure how I feel about my kids watching it. I have not let them watch it yet. I can't tell you what their um, reactions to it are going to be. I wanted to watch it once myself. This is the first um, Wubulous World of Dr. Seuss I've had a chance to see, so I always preview the movies before I let my kids watch them. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of weird. You get three episodes called There's Nothing to Fear in Here, The Blag Blutter Beast, and Norval the Great. Um, the only real recognizable character to me... Um, it really is the cat in the hat, uh, and there's Binky, but, um, like I said, it's kind of, it's kind of odd, it's like what you'd expect, Dr. Seuss live action, a little bit weird, Dr. Seuss stuff, let's face it, is a little bit weird, it's enjoyable, um, I think maybe slightly older kids, four or five years old, would probably enjoy this disc, I will say that even though there are no extra features on it, the running time is 72 minutes, so at an hour or 12 minutes, um, that's not too bad, not too bad at all, so there you go, uh, a good batch of kids releases on DVD, and um, almost any of them really are good for most ages of kids.